all right beautiful people around the world today we have a video and topic that is every tesla owner worst nightmare man oh man but y'all know i'm gonna bring it to you you know i'm gonna keep you guys updated on what's going on in our ev community in our tesla community and again i hope everybody's having an amazing start to their new years that your year is filled with blessings happiness joy that you get to experience something new, that you get to spend time with your loved ones, your families, and hey, that you might buy an EV, that you might buy a Tesla. But uh, we got a high Tesla guy um, with a video that is called my expensive out of warranty Tesla Model Y repair. And as a Model Y owner, and my Model Y is literally sitting right in front of me outside. It's kind of scary, you know, because <laughs> This can be any of us, man. And I don't wish out of warranty repairs on anyone. You know, we just went through a warranty repair with our controller arm. And um, it's a, you know, an easy th two to three hour fix. Um, my suspension crapped out on me, my controller arm at 30,000 miles. So, and we've seen that happen to a lot of people. But um, I don't know what this guy's situation is. So I'm actually going to be checking this video out for the first time with you guys and seeing what his process what he had to pay for what's going on with his model model y in particular so let's enjoy this together i will leave the original link to his channel in the description box down below for you guys to check his channel out um for yourself and again we do a, a lot of the amazing same content on this channel you know with our model y our teslas electric motorcycles and covering the car market and stuff like that so if you like this kind of content Drop a drop a like, subscribe to the channel, join the OK Life family. But let's check out what's going on with this expensive out of warranty repair on his Tesla Model Y. Well, I'm in a bit of a pickle, and um, these types uh -oh. of videos I don't like making because uh, I'm pretty sure nobody likes making them, or and nobody wants to go through it. And again, we do not wish this on anyone, man. Yes, indeed. They usually cost me a lot of money. I like his seats. We hate to see you go. I am back from the Cybertruck delivery event. Uh, drove the 1100 miles there and back straight through nonstop. Um, but we took a different vehicle when I got back, um, I got in my car on the weekend and I was greeted with an alert and it says cabin climate control system requires service. Man, we have been seeing couple, like our last couple of people that, that went through battery replacements or needed any kind of repairs. It comes to find that they've always done road trips like every time they come back from a road trip the car throws some kind of error we've seen two guys that needed battery replacements after doing two big road trips in our pat in our previous videos man and i have no heat and it's iowa and it's winter and it's cold so other than the seat heaters i have no heat so what's the deal? Well, I tried to do a little bit of troubleshooting myself. And if you click on the message, you get an alert that says VC front underscore a four, four, seven climate control system requires service. And it turns out I needed to schedule some service. So, um, in order to troubleshoot any further, I decided to say, let's go to the service mode and check that out. Now, in order to get to the service mode, you select software and you hold your finger on the model Y or the model three or whatever you have for a few seconds and you let off and it gives you a code to enter in the code you want to enter is service. And yes, I want to go ahead and enable service mode. And the screen changes with a red border. And um, from there, I want to pick thermal systems and I want to pick sensors and valves. And you will see that I have a big red dot on the compressor called the compressor fault. Oh and man. I click that and it says compressor self fault. And that's a problem. Yep. Yeah, I think it's a big problem. So what do you do? You reach out to Tesla through your the te service. Your Tesla app, app say, get on your phone. And I sent a couple of screenshots and they came back and said, yep, you've got a problem. And that problem is going to cost you about $1,400 to fix plus tax. 
Yo, yeah, it's going to hit you big time. So around $1,500 total. And the reason why it's going to cost me money is because my car is out of warranty. I have 57,500 miles and the standard warranty is 50,000. 50,000 miles after 50,000 miles. That's it. And we are currently coming up on that pretty, you know, getting on that pretty, pretty soon, maybe in a couple of months, maybe at the end of the year, maybe. So um, hopefully we can make some good decisions. And um, I don't know, maybe I've been really eyeing a truck or the new Model 3. So, um, but again, I love my Model Y so much. And he, he probably loves his Model Y so much as well. And you guys probably love your Model Y as much. You know, it's nice. It's bigger. Um, you know. But we hate that out of warranty type of deal, you know. Especially with these cars. We're seeing, you know, different issues pop up with different owners. But again, people live in different environments. People live in different climates. So it's just like, you know, you never know. Buy the extended warranty. So this is going to cost me that. And I went, great, fantastic. When can I get it fixed? Well, I'm sitting here on December 4th. And the soonest they can get me in is December 14th, which is a bit of inconvenience, not having heat for about two weeks. But uh, there you go. I'll get by. The seat heaters will be fine. I'll wear gloves, hat, whatever. But yeah. in the back and forth with the service center exchange, um, I started asking some questions, you know, because I know that the compressor system, the thermal system also regulates the battery and all of the other systems on the motors. And I'm like, do I need to be concerned with like supercharging or driving the two hours I need to get to the service center? And their response came back was, yeah, um, we recommend you don't drive your car and we recommend that you have yeah. it towed to the service center two hours away. And doing some investigation on the towing, they said you can reach out to the roadside assistance and set up towing. And that's basically what I attempted to do. And I did that. And uh, I said, before you actually send a truck over, let me know what the cost of that's going to be. And very quickly, they came back with a very nice cost of $720 to tow my car. Oh, shit. Man. So this fella's almost out too. He's out about, what is that? Almost 2,300, 22, 2,300 after tax. We're looking at 2,300 bucks, you guys, already. Damn, that is. Hundred and twenty miles to the service center, which is outrageously high. Maybe it is. And again, I'm I'm so, we're grateful down here in Texas, Houston, where I'm at. There's like four service centers literally around the area, so it's not too bad, you know, to get your car from here and here and there. You know, you're probably the the, the nearest service center is literally eight nine miles from here where I'm sitting. It's not. It feels high but that's where we're at. So the next step of this process is, and this is where I'm at right now in this video, is what do I do? Um, I've had some back and forth saying, you know, what kind of problems am I going to run into if I drive this? And they're saying, well, you could damage your high voltage system. You could damage your battery pack. You could damage your motors. You can damage the drivetrain. Seems pretty bad which kind of leaves me with the situation that I'm in right now, which is I'm going to have to probably break down and pay the money to have my car towed by flatbed 120 miles to the service center, which is going to end up costing me about $2,200, $2,300 when this yeah. is all said and done, assuming they don't find anything else. Um, so that's where I'm at right now. They and did. unfortunately, I have two Model Ys, and um, we're going to make that work by just me driving my wife's Model Y. And this is going to sit here until I figure out how to get this car to Des Moines safely. Checking in again, it's been about a week, and there hasn't been a lot of activity. I've actually been driving my car um, because in town, I think I'm fine. It's been fine, but uh, it's been cold here in Iowa, and... I don't have heat, um, but uh, thankfully the seat heater does its job and I have a heated garage so overnight my car doesn't cold soak and get super, super cold. So 
that's helpful. But today is the day, today is the day that I am going to attempt to have the car towed two hours from Cedar Rapids, Iowa over to the service center in Des Moines. I am using AAA and so far their communication is terrible. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm not sure if they're coming. I'm not sure if they aren't, but uh, I guess we'll see how it goes. I'll check in on the next step. Well, it's never a dull moment, um, but I'll get to that in a second. Uh, the car got loaded on a truck to get towed away. I have to admit, it isn't a sight that I was particularly happy to see, but it went smooth. Once I was able to get things straightened out with AAA and the guy showed up, it wasn't the time that we agreed to, but that's fine. Um, car got loaded on the flatbed. It was because the car is drivable, they were just able to drive it up, strap it on, and I watched it drive away. Um, and it was on its way for its two hour journey to Des Moines to the service center. Um, I have to admit, I did check in on it because I turned on sentry mode and pulled up the cameras and I was able to watch the car drive down the road. In fact, I even watched it pull into the service center even though the connection over cellular was poor. In hindsight, that probably wasn't the best thing to do because um, as people on X have pointed out to me as I've been explaining what's been going on in this process that turning on sentry mode basically enabled the car alarm and the car is on the back of a moving truck that's bouncing around on the road and there was a good chance that I was going to set off the car alarm and scare the living bejesus out of the guy driving. And I suppose that could have happened, but it didn't happen. But uh, so the car is there. Um, I got it there a day before my appointment, and um, I'm sitting here the day after, and um, I have an update because I was contacted by Tesla and said, well, that $1,500 charge estimate that we gave you, we got to do more stuff. Yeah. Um, not only do they have to replace the compressor or heat pump, but they also have to replace what they're calling the super manifold, and they're also saying they have to replace all the AC lines um, because the damage is more extensive. And... Uh, I don't know why they're just telling me that it is. I haven't got that figured out yet. Hopefully by the end of this video, I'll give you some direction on that, but perhaps not. Um, so they ended up giving me a new estimate and it's no longer $1,500. It is $2,600. 2,600. We're looking at, we're at three. Where, what are we at now, guys? <clears throat> we're at like 33, 34. Oh my God. Dollars. Ouch. And I am not under warranty. And for those of you that are wondering, I have a early model 2021 long range Tesla Model Y that was built around October of 2020. And it had 57,500 miles on it at the time of the damage. And standard warranty is 50,000. I did not buy the extended warranty. Maybe I should have. Um, but anyway, 2,600 bucks. So I reached out to him and I said, listen, is there anything you can do? I'm only, you know, 7,000 miles out of warranty, less than six months. Is there something you can do? Well, they called me back and they said, well, because it's so soon out of warranty, they're going to cut the labor rate in half, but I still have to pay full price for the parts. So the 2,600 is now like 2,200 and change. So not great, but I'll take it 500. I mean, at least, at least they can work with you. Now we've, and I've noticed that at my service centers, they will somewhat work with you when i went and got my controller arm fixed um they wanted me to they wanted to charge me 500 dollars for my bumper clip my bumper that was misaligned for the um uh, because i had the clips fall off that attach it um you know just because i installed the carbon fiber front lip and y'all know i make my tesla look so amazing i like to do the side skirts the, the spoiler and um yeah that it kind of messed up my front bumper and um they said oh we'll do it for free so um i didn't have to pay anything that service so they will work with you i've noticed that they will you know depending on where you're at they will work with you they will be reasonable they'll try their best they will try their best they, and the one thing we like to hear is that they will try you know but then there's some cases from some people where they just say you oh nope nope we can't do it no sorry you know, and that's just, it is what it is, you know. 100 bucks is still 500 bucks. So that's the update for repair day. So <laughs> if anything else happens, you'll know about it here next.
Now that the car is at the service center, now it might be a good time to show you what that experience is like. I was able to get some Sentry video as it was pulling into the service center, but that didn't last long. Now, one of the first things that yeah, Tesla does that is put your car in what's called service mode. Now you can yeah. see that the car is in service mode from the app and you can also see the battery percentage, but there's not much else that you can see about the car. Instead, the controls on the screen change to walk you through the service process. The first thing that you can see is that it'll give you an estimated completion time for when the repair is going to be completed. And for me, it said Monday, December 18th. However, they told me that they were going to do their best shot to have it done by the end of the day on the Saturday and not the Monday, which will allow me to get the car over the weekend, which works out much better for my holiday plans. You also have access to all of your messages as most of the communication between you and Tesla yeah. is going to be via the in-app messaging. Now from here, I'm going to walk you through the eight steps of the process. Now step one is car preparation. I already got that done when I had made the arrangements of putting it in for service. Now step two is for you to approve the estimate to actually fix the car yep. and you can choose to view the estimate at any time and you can see that my estimate is for a total of $2,300. Now step three covers transport. Now if you have a loaner car that information will show up here and in my case I didn't have a loaner car. Step four will walk you through the drop-off process and for me this was done by Tesla. This is like giving me flashbacks when I had to uh, take my car to service. Especially my Model 3. Ugh. And I had one auto warranty repair on my Model 3, as most of you know, if you watch the videos, um, revolving around my speaker system. My speaker system gave out on me in my Model 3. It was something with the connection board. And um, yeah, that was, luckily I got reimbursed through the insurance, but that was a crazy story if y'all know about it when it arrived on the tow truck. Step five is where the meat and potatoes happen. This is where you can track the current progress of the repair. However, they really don't show you much in the way of details. Step six covers payment. Now, once the service is done, this is where you will go to pay for the repair. Step seven is where you do the hands-free pickup of your car. And step eight is where you can share some feedback and see a service summary. Fortunately for me, Tesla was able to complete the repair by the end of the day on Saturday, and my plan was to pick up the car the next day, which was a Sunday. Even though they were closed, they could put the key card in my car and lock it, and I could use my phone to get the car without their involvement at all. Now, I did end up paying for the repair through the app itself, and not long after that, they turned off service mode. Now, once off, I was able to look at the Sentry Mode cameras again, and they were nice enough to actually hand wash the car before leaving it outside. So the next day, my wife and I drove her purple Model Y the two hours over to Des Moines and found my car right where they said they would leave it. They had wall connectors on the site, so I was able to make sure that I had a full charge before making the long journey home. Picked up the car from the Tesla Service Center. It was a little over two hour drive to get there, and now we're making our way back. And it's been relatively uneventful. The only thing that I've noted in the car so far that is a little weird is that uh, they turned off FSD beta for some reason. I had to re-enable it. Um, not sure why that happened, but everything else appears to be normal. So at the end of the day, Tesla ended up replacing the compressor, the super manifold, and all the AC lines for a grand total of $2,321. And that's with the 50% discount on the labor that I negotiated. The next question that I wanted to have answered is, why did this fail? I know that early Model Ys had a heat pump issue and That's what was I was going to say. There was, there was a heat pump issue. And again, we, had, we have a 2020 Model Y, you know, dealing with that. Um, and it's also red as well. And um, yeah, and again, I have a 2020, uh, 2021 blue Model Y long range now. So, man, this is, you know, it's, it's scary, you know, especially for consumers that want to buy these cars used um, for people that, that have them right now. And there's a lot of people that have these 2020 models, especially. So, man under a real factory recall a couple of years ago. Now, at the time, they didn't replace the compressor. They only replaced some sensors, and they said that my compressor was fine. I still don't have any good answers as to why it failed other than it just failed. Now, they did say they replaced it with some upgraded equipment, 
which does imply that Tesla did change the design at some point along the way. I also asked Tesla what I needed to do to make sure that this didn't happen again, and they responded more than once saying that their only recommendation is that I always keep the climate control set to auto. Now, I'm not sure why this would be their explanation, but it gives me pause that running the climate in manual might be a problem. In the end, this was all I was able to get out of Tesla, and I'll just need to live the fact that I won't fully know what happened. Hmm. Overall, I accepted what happened as something that happens to all cars. Teslas are hyped as being maintenance-free cars, and for the most part, they are. Up until this point, all I've needed to do with this car is fill up the windshield wiper fluid, and I did replace one set of tires at 55,000 miles. That said, they can still break, and the really expensive stuff like the motors and the batteries are still under warranty and will be for a while longer. The Teslas are great cars, and I don't want this video to discourage anybody from getting one. I yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say. You guys don't get discouraged now. You know, we've seen this happen, you know, to a couple of people. You know, dealing with, you know, components like, you know, the AC, the unit, you know, units like that. You know, it's just, you just never know. But again, in my experience as well, this car, you know, owning Tesla for the last four years have been stress-free. You know, just windshield wiper fluid and tires. And that's all I've done on my Model Y besides the controller arm. Uh, suspension controller arm was covered under warranty. Um, and I believe out of warranty, it was a $300 repair, which is not bad at all. But I've enjoyed the car. I love it. You know, free home charging every single day from 9 p.m. to 7 in the morning. Again, but like I tell you guys, EVs are not for everybody. Teslas are not for everybody. You know what I'm saying? But again, to amazing vehicles. But everything has its pros and its cons. Everything has its flaws, man. I would do it again and again in a heartbeat. If you're considering the purchase of a Tesla of your own, make sure you use a referral link to save you some money on that purchase. Use any referral link you want, but if you want to use mine, that's great too. Also, if you found this video helpful, please do me a favor and click that like button. And if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. But hey, y'all go check out the homie and I'll have his channel linked in the description box down below. And hey, are you a Tesla owner, or EV owner? Comment down below. Have you had any problems with your Tesla? out of warranty comment down below let us know the cost you know what you've had to replace um and even if you had warranty repairs comment that below as well we would love to know you guys experiences and what you've been through in your tesla no matter if it's the model 3 y s or x comment down below but hey, if you like this kind of content subscribe join the channel i try to keep you guys updated every single day with amazing content revolving around evs teslas the car community um even motorcycles and stuff from in in real life videos and also studio videos as well but hey i love you guys and we're wishing you guys an amazing year and that maybe you you know get a tesla or ev and see what it's like or maybe you know what i'm saying <laughs> but hey i love you guys and i will catch y'all in the next one peace and love you guys